without any further ado, Addison. So there was this man. And he had a group called the Waiting Souls. And they had a message that they wanted to share with the world. So convicted, so deep in their heart, that they know they couldn't let the fear take over them from delivering it. They know they couldn't. There's no way. So they rehearsed for two years. And you want to know where they rehearsed? They rehearsed at 2 a.m. in a cemetery. And you rehearsed every single song that they wanted to share with the world to inspire. Because they said, <laughs> check this out, they thought, if what the love they had in them that they could share with the world, if that love was true love, if they really believed, if they were really convicted in what they had in their heart and what they had to share with the world was important, that they might just wait for the dead. And that if they chose for two years to be in the cemetery at two in the morning and sing their song in the most freakiest, craziest place, <laughs> that maybe, that maybe when that moment comes, when that fear came to them, they're about to deliver that song, or in the moment when they're delivering their message and their hope, their, their peace, their, their passion, their inspiration, maybe in that moment when they're afraid, but they were in the moment of passion and love, that maybe in that time they rehearsed, they were tough enough, convicted enough, and in love enough, in love enough, in love enough about what they do and what they do. So I'm not going to ask you guys to go to the cemetery and try to adjust, try to adjust the dead. <laughs> but that would be a tantra. <laughs> and I am considering. Literally. Yeah. So you, you might 
might want to use those two advantages, right? <laughs> three in the morning. Three in the morning, I'll use three in the morning. We don't adjust the edge people. <laughs> so that same man, check this out, same man. Week before his one of his biggest concerts ever, ever biggest concert ever. Eighty thousand people were there. All the political party of his country was going to be there. Both polar opposites. Like he's, I mean, the political party that was going to show up. And this was a peace concert. One was totally radical, and the other was totally radical, and they both hated each other. And they're killing thousands of people. They're killing thousands of people for what they believe. And on this day, this performer, he was basically, basically this. His message, his conviction, and his love for the message that he was sharing, which is peace, love, and harmony, was more important than the thousands of people who are dying. It was more important than those two political figures. It was way more important than his life. And he knew this. Why? Because a week before he performed, people came into his house, shoot his family down, and him. Shot him down. Obviously, he didn't die. But they shot him down. And a week after, he showed up to his concert, and he delivered the best concert he could ever do in his entire life. And the reporters asked him, dude, he shot you down, you and your family. Why, why did you perform? Why? You know they're going to be there. You know they're after what you're when you're trying to promote peace, love, and harmony, that you can't have that here. You can't have that here. You know what he told him? This is what he told him. The forces or the people who are out in the world trying to make this worse, they're trying to make this wrong and not happen for us. The forces that are against peace, love, and harmony, they're not resting, they're not gonna stop. And he died at age 37. His goal was to spread peace, love, and harmony. He sold over 100 million records. He's the, he's the man that introduced reggae. All forces, all forces, a lot of people was trying to not have him do what he does or did. And he didn't let it. And give up because of the conviction, because of utilizing his advantages, because of the big idea that was born within him, because he chose love, not fear. So, in this room and in this time, we have an opportunity to stir it up. Stir it up. <laughs> because what we gathered here in the past three hours was not just emotion, not just information. What we gathered here is an opportunity. We got an opportunity. We got an opportunity to make a choice. And that choice is there for us to take or leave. And so, in the words of one of my greatest mentors, life is a game. Treat both and positive the same. Right or wrong, good or bad still in your hand to so just make that choice. Next slide, and I know the time is up, but the time isn't up for us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is this is UC Berkeley, and this was last night. Last night was the last class of Decal Chiropractic at UC Berkeley. UC Berkeley is the number one public school in the United States. They're learning chiropractic. In the 12 weeks, he decided to become a chiropractor. She did that, decided to become a chiropractor. They decided to become a chiropractor. <laughs> he decided to become a chiropractor. He did. She really wants to. <laughs> he did. And all of these here decided to get under care. <laughs> those two fingers, <laughs> they're pointing to us. You have a vision tonight, I'm sure. How many of you guys, in, in these past three hours, have you, have you, have you had a revelation or a waking or, or a challenge to yourself? Like, raise your hand if you did, like, oh my god, I should do this. I, I should do this. I, I, should, I should do it. And then we, we got the tools now, we got the conviction, we got the advantages. So, it's on you. Just take it. Make it happen. Uh, next button. My topic was Mind the Gap. <laughs> and the gap that I wanted to talk about was who you are right now and who you're destined to be. And there's about 28 slides explaining that. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that you guys already figured it out. I think everyone in this room already figured it out. How to understand who you are right now and to pursue the person that you want to be who you're destined to be. But if you didn't, just hit me up and I'll send you all the slides. <laughs> Come on! 